Welcome back, Science 20s, to part two of spontaneity. Um, as we were saying on the last video, when we take a look at this table on page four of your data booklet, up at the top here, this is where we have the strongest oxidizing agents. This is where the item going through the most reactions for reduction takes place. You'll notice when we compare to the lab, silver solution reacted the most. So it is my strongest oxidizing agent. Down on the bottom right-hand side, this is my strongest reducing agent. Remembering, reducing agents go with oxidation. If I think about my lab again, zinc, my metal here what had more reactions than the other two metals up higher. So it is my stronger reducing agent. Again, the key to this was if there was a downhill, we saw a reaction. So if we saw something like the copper two solution, the blue solution, and we dropped a piece of zinc into it because it's downhill, we saw a reaction. We call that spontaneous. So we're going to clear this and let's take a look at this rule. The rule is so simple. This is what I like to call the simplest rule in chemistry. So I put it in a box. Spontaneous reactions occur when we don't have to add any external energy. The reaction happens no matter what. I put something into something, it reacts. I didn't do anything. That's a spontaneous reaction. You'll notice when I put a piece of copper into copper two solution, there wasn't a reaction. That's like saying, hey, I put an ice cube, solid water into a glass of water. There's no reaction there because it's not spontaneous. Spontaneous reactions happen when my OA is above my RA. Think of it as I put a ball at the top of this mountain. The ball will naturally roll downhill. Because I read from left to right, the ball naturally rolls downhill, rolls downhill. So we're going to see a reaction take place. We know this reaction is spontaneous because OA is above RA or my reduction is above my oxidation. So let's take a look at what this means on my table. I don't care what I pick. I can pick any two substances. So let's take tin solution, which I didn't use in my lab, and let's drop into it a piece of magnesium metal, Mg solid. Since it's going, I read from left to right, so since it goes downhill, I know that every time I drop a piece of magnesium into a tin solution, there's going to be a reaction. I know every time I drop a piece of lead solid into gold solution downhill, there's going to be a reaction. This is called spontaneous. Now, if there's something called spontaneous, that means there's also something called non-spontaneous. Non-spontaneous is when I mix two things together and nothing happens, meaning I would have to supply energy to get the reaction to take place. It doesn't happen spontaneously. It's non-spontaneous. This occurs whenever we go uphill. Now, if my OA is below my RA, and remember, we read from left to right. If I put a ball here, balls don't roll uphill unless I supply energy. So if I have an uphill, nothing's going to happen. Well, let's look at my table again for this. So I'm going to pick two random items. So I have a magnesium ion solution, a magnesium solution, and I'm going to drop a piece of copper solid into my magnesium solution. Notice, my oxidizing agent is below my reducing agent. Because remember, here is my oxidizing, here is my reducing. Well, this is my oxidizing agent. It's way down here. Here is my reducing agent, it's up here. If I put a ball here, balls don't just naturally go up. This will not go unless I supply energy. I think we get lost in our minds and we think of Mr. Kemp any day could go in the back chemical cupboard, grab any two things, mix it, and do an experiment for us. Why is he not doing that? One, if you think about it, if 
half the reactions are spontaneous in the world, that means half the reactions are non-spontaneous, right? If I go grab a piece of copper and I throw it into magnesium nitrate, there's not going to be a reaction because it's uphill. It's non-spontaneous. By the way, actually less than half the reactions in the world are spontaneous because if I take a piece of magnesium and drop it into magnesium solution, that also won't react. So anything uphill or anything that is straight across will not react. They are called non-spontaneous. Let's make up a different one. I'm going to take a piece of cadmium solid and I'm going to drop it into lithium solution. Notice, it doesn't matter which one I say first, I read from left to right. So when I drop cadmium solid into lithium solution, it's still uphill. This is going to be non-spontaneous. Perfect. So that's how easy this rule is. Well, let's do an actual real example this time. So let's take a piece of zinc metal. So zinc metal would be a solid. So here it is. And we're going to put it into a solution of copper 2. So there's my copper 2. Okay. So if I take a look at this, it's going downhill, which means it's spontaneous. My reduction half reaction, because right, this is the strongest oxidizing agent I have in this example, which means it is going through reduction. So I'm going to just copy it out. The reduction half reaction for this, as I copy it out, is going to be Cu2 positive plus two electrons go, goes to Cu solid. I'm just going to copy straight across. Well, this guy is my reducing agent. He's my strongest reducing agent in this example, which means he is going through oxidation, right? Ogre, ragu. So strongest reducing agent. So I'm going to copy him out this way. So my oxidation half reaction is going to be zinc solid goes to Zn2 plus plus two electrons. Notice my strongest oxidizing agent is my reduction. They go hand in hand. My strongest reducing agent is my oxidation. They go hand in hand. You just have to make sure to copy this guy going from right to left. Now I can do what I did yesterday. I can add these two reactions together, cross out my electrons, and I'm left with Cu2 positive plus Zn solid on the left, Cu solid plus Zn2 positive on the right. Since it goes downhill, we know this reaction is going to be spontaneous. So if I drop a piece of zinc into copper solution, there will be a reaction. Well, let's try another one. This time, can you do this example? I would like you to make some circles and try it. Pause the video. When you're finished, unpause the video to check your work. So we have a piece of gold. Well, gold is here. So a piece of gold would be gold solid. We're going to drop it into acid. So I'm going to drop it into HCl, H-positive ions. Now, if you think about this, this is now my strongest oxidizing agent. It's the thing going through reduction. This is my strongest reducing agent. It's the item going through oxidation. So if I wrote out the reduction half reaction, it would be 2H-positive plus, and I'm just going to copy it across, two electrons goes to H2 gas. My oxidation half reaction is up here, and we're just, I'm just going to copy it from right to left. Au solid goes to Au3 plus. Again, I'm going to change pen colors. Ooh, my electrons can't cancel out three and two, so I'm going to have to multiply this one by three and this whole one by two. So now I have six electrons on the left, two times three, six electrons on the right, carry everything down. Remember, this three carries through. So three times two, I now have six H positive plus 
two AU solid, three all the way through, three H2 gas, and two AU3 positive. Let's just check her work because this one was a little harder. Six hydrogen, six hydrogen, two gold, two gold, six positive charge on the left, six positive charge on the right. Again, when I read left to right, since my OA is below my RA, since this is uphill, we would call this reaction non-spontaneous. Meaning, my gold is not going to react with hydrochloric acid. So if you want to protect your gold from burglars breaking into your house, take all your gold, throw it into hydrochloric acid, label it dangerous hydrochloric acid. Burglars will come in. They can't stick their hands in there because they'll burn. It's hydrochloric acid, but your gold is still safe because there will be no reaction. Gold does not react with H positive. There is absolutely no reaction there. Now, what I want to do is let's look at when we started this, we started the conversation talking about gold and we said, hey, what is so special about gold? Why doesn't it oxidize? Why doesn't it corrode? The reason it doesn't is, look where it is on the table. It's the, if this is the strongest, right, reducing agent down here, and this is the strongest oxidizing agent up here, this guy is the weakest possible reducing agent you could ever have. It is weak. And if you look on your table, it explains to you increasing strength of reducing agents. Strongest down here, weakest up here. This guy does not have the strength to react with anybody. So if you take a look, it doesn't matter what solution you drop gold into. Lithium, calcium, cadmium, nickel, tin, silver, all of them are going to be uphill. Gold reacts with nothing because, because gold is such a weak reducing agent. Gold will always be a non-spontaneous reaction. My gold solid doesn't react with anything because it doesn't, it doesn't have the strength. It is such a weak reducing agent. It's such a poor oxidation half reaction. It will not work. There is nothing above it up here that's going to cause a reaction. So what I want you to understand is our table is a baby table. Right, there's only about 15 half reactions on this table. There are tables that have 60, 65, 70, 80 half reactions. We have a very simple half reaction table, much simpler than a one, let's say, in chemistry 30, but the rules still all apply. 